2. Jesus gives mercy to those without morality because only mercy paves the way for good morals. So the first category that Jesus dealt with is the accusers. He gave them a mirror. The second category that Jesus deals with is the accused. He gives them mercy. Why he gives them mercy is because the only way accused people, sinners, liars, hypocrites, people who commit compromise, people who lack character and integrity, the only way their life can change is not by beating them or reminding them of their sin, on reminding how bad their sin is, but the only way their life can change is the way Jesus portrayed it here. Give them mercy. This is a very complex theological story. The reason why is because this is probably the only time where Jesus gave somebody forgiveness without them asking. This woman didn't come for repentance. She was caught. Have you ever got caught for something and then you feel guilty asking God for forgiveness because you're like, I'm sure God knows I didn't want to be forgiven because <laughs> I didn't come to God. I got caught. It's hard to forgive people who, who you catch doing something bad because you know they did not mean to apologize. Because if they would, they would tell you before they get caught and wouldn't get caught. I can only imagine Jesus offering this precious gift of forgiveness and mercy to a woman knowing she probably would never come to me if she wouldn't get caught. How long will this last? What is her real intentions? What is she going to do with this? Yet Jesus still gives it away. He gives it to a woman who got caught. How much more he'll give to men and women who confess. If he gives mercy to a person who gets caught and doesn't even ask for it, how much more he will give to those who confess and who ask him for it. If blind Bartimaeus asked for mercy, Jesus gave him more than mercy. If a woman with a demon-possessed daughter asked for mercy, Jesus gave her more than mercy. Why? Because when you ask for mercy, He will give you mercy. He gives her mercy for this sexual sin that she commits, that she gets caught in. And He knows that she probably doesn't have a pure motives of even asking for it. And Jesus gives her anyway. When He gives her that gift of, I do not condemn you. He gives her the command after that gift to go and sin no more. I want to register the second thought deep into your mind and this is the thought that we've mentioned. You cannot go and sin no more without receiving the first gift, the gift of I don't condemn you. If you can put that verse one more time where Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Without receiving this gift of no condemnation, you cannot go. Without receiving this gift of no condemnation, you cannot go on. If you don't have this gift of condemnation, this is what's going to happen. You will go and sin more. And that's what usually happens. Most of the time, people sin more. Not because they didn't, didn't, didn't ask for forgiveness. Not because they didn't say, God, I'm sorry. It's because when they asked for forgiveness, Jesus gave them forgiveness. But Jesus giving you forgiveness and you receiving this gift that He does not condemn you. That He is not angry at you. And that He doesn't look at you as a slut, a drug addict, a hypocrite, or a compromising 
just this sinner until this clicks deep into your subconscious he does not condemn you and it's not because the sin you did is not important it's not because he can relate to you because he also had a past it's because he loves you so much and he cares for you until that sinks in you cannot move on and if you will it will be go and sin more and many people think that Jesus' words for people is go and try harder it's not it's first you gotta receive this gift I don't condemn you when you ask Jesus for forgiveness mercy is not something you deserve mercy is not something you earn you don't get it because somehow when you were doing sin your intentions were right it's not because somehow when you did the bad things while you were bad you still did some good things it's just because Jesus is merciful that, that's all there is we always want to add something of ourselves on the plate at least one leaf so that God could kind of say I had my efforts in it and God says if you add your leaf to it it cancels the whole deal the only way you can receive my mercy is to remove your efforts out of it they're good I applaud you I love you you're awesome that you tried but you have to receive this gift neither do I condemn you go and sin no more what holds people back to their past is condemnation what holds people back to their sins of their past is shame that's why many people won't come to church it's because they made mistakes and they feel like if I walk in everyone's gonna condemn you see that is a lie of the devil because nobody's gonna remember what you've done most people are so busy about their own life and the devil tells you that condemnation so you believe in it and so there will be a chain that holds you back to doing more things that you're not happy about more things that you feel guilty about saying one day one day one day today is the day you have to believe in your heart and in your mind even if every religious fanatic is gonna condemn me if Jesus is on my side I will go after Jesus and everything is gonna be alright and I will go and say no more I will go and say no more most of the time people's focus has been go and sin no more it's written on churches it's written on people's doors and this is what people remember when somebody commits sin and repents and usually we tell them well Jesus says he forgives you but you better go and sin no more I want you to remove that out of your radar I want you to put this first on your mind neither do I condemn you the reason they don't condemn you is because I gave them a mirror the reason why I don't condemn you is because I give you mercy this gift is so important you won't be able to reach your dreams without it this gift is not optional this is not so you can walk around being happy this is so you can walk around and sin no more this is not just so you can walk around and, and not be shamed. This is the only way you can go and sin no more. Because if there will be another way, Jesus would not bother to say, neither do I condemn you. I love the stories because when the critics left, Jesus didn't leave with them. When the accusers left, I love the fact the Bible says Jesus was still there. And when everyone left another part that fascinates me is Jesus did not pick up to get a stone and say woman nobody threw a stone at you because they don't have sin and here I come I don't have a sin I have the right to throw a stone Jesus doesn't lower himself to pick up stones he only lowers himself to pick up people he left heaven and came on earth not to pick up a stone to pick me up to pick you up if your view of Jesus is the one who would bend his back to push you lower that is not the Jesus of the Bible the Jesus of the Bible would bend his back and give it to people to whip it so he can pick you up pick me up pick that person that you say that person is not worthy of salvation and not just forgive your sin but also remind you I don't have negative nasty judgmental condemning shaming diminishing feelings toward you your mom might does your boss probably does your friends probably do your enemies do i 